Here's something interesting. The 2018 11-inch iPad Pro outperforms the 2018 13-inch MacBook Pro at almost half the price, a third of the weight, and a quarter of the size. How? Well, although Apple manufactures both, they don't actually design the processors for both. Almost 15 years ago, before the original iPhone was launched, Intel was actually approached to produce the CPU for it. In some alternate universe, Intel agreed and gave a whole new meaning to their monopoly over the entire microprocessor industry. But in our universe, that's not what happened, as Intel rejected them. This was probably for the best, as Intel's x86 architecture really couldn't compete with ARM when it came to power efficiency, and for a mobile device, this was pretty important. And so, ever since it was born, iOS has been built to run on ARM. Mac OS, however, has been built for Intel x86 ever since Disney's Cars was in cinemas, so it's not quite as easy to just all of a sudden dump Apple's ARM chips into MacBooks. But we are close. Mac OS on ARM has been in discussion ever since Apple unveiled the A4 chip for the original iPad and iPhone 4 in 2010. Its successor, the A5 in 2011, even managed to find its way into an experimental MacBook Air. Little did we know, we'd find an ARM chip in an actual consumer MacBook Pro just five years later. The 2016 MacBook Pro introduced a touch bar, running a variant of watchOS powered by, you guessed it, an ARM chip. The Apple T1 chip also operated as a secure enclave for Touch ID and a gatekeeper for the microphone and webcam. Just a year later, the Apple T2 chip took things a step further, throwing in stuff like HEVC transcoding, image processing, and always on Hey Siri support was even thrown in the year after. Apple is throwing in more and more functionality on this ARM processor for macOS. The software side of things is also opening its arms to macOS on ARM. At WWDC 2018, Apple announced the development of a cross-platform apps framework between iOS and macOS, enabling apps developed for iOS to run as native macOS apps. The framework is set to launch later in 2019, but stocks, news, home, and voice memos on macOS are already using an early version of this framework. With macOS running iOS apps wrapped in a native container, macOS on ARM doesn't seem like a far off fairy tale. So let's fast forward to anywhere between late 2019 and 2021, the time period which the first ARM MacBook is expected to launch, and envision what it would be like. If this hypothetical ARM MacBook is running on the same A12X that the 2018 iPad Pro runs, and that's already fantastic, as we'd be getting slightly better performance from what we'd expect in a MacBook Pro. As an added bonus, it'll be much cheaper for Apple to produce, so hopefully it'll come at a lower price tag. But I really wouldn't put it past Apple to pocket a higher profit margin. Another great bonus is that this hypothetical MacBook would be a lot more power efficient than those before it. This could result in a smaller battery making for a lighter machine, or the same size battery making for insane battery life or even stick to the same size battery by full throttling the performance of the chip to its limits. Graphical performance is a whole other story, as Apple claims that the A12X chip performs at the same level as an Xbox One S when it comes to graphics. They then back this up by demoing NBA 2K on the 2018 iPad Pro. Combine this with the fact that porting an iOS game to macOS is next to no effort, this could change gaming on macOS forever as we potentially reach desktop level performance on a 13 inch notebook. Throw tvOS into that equation and Apple have effectively created a games console just by pure consequence. Now obviously it's not all sunshine and rainbows. The transition period is going to be very interesting, to say the least, as we won't see all macOS apps just running on ARM from day one. We won't even see all Macs running on ARM from day one. I personally believe they'll test the waters with a 12-inch MacBook first, since that currently serves a single purpose, being completely and utterly useless. All in all, the future of Mac hardware looks extremely bright. Intel really didn't realize how much they'd regret not producing the original iPhone's chip.